If you lose your phone, your IMEI number is crucial for tracking it. The IMEI is a unique 15-digit code that identifies your device. Tools like IMEI Tracker on Kali Linux claim to use this number to locate your phone. To use such tools, you'll need your IMEI number, usually found in your phone's settings or on the box. Be cautious, using IMEI tracking tools can raise privacy and security concerns. Always weigh the risks before using third-party tracking solutions. So, what does IMEI Tracker actually do? Don't worry, this isn't a how-to guide. Think of it as a digital detective. You give it an IMEI, and it scours online databases for info about your phone. It's not a GPS tracker. It won't show you a blinking dot on a map. Instead, it fetches details like your phone's brand and model, maybe the country or carrier. It automates the process of scraping the internet for scraps of data tied to that IMEI. It's a collector, not a tracker. The name IMEI Tracker is misleading. It should be IMEI Info Finder. It promises tracking, but delivers information. And that gap between expectation and reality? That's where the trouble starts. It doesn't give you live location, can't wipe your device, and can't make it ring. It's just a data lookup service, not a magic bullet. The marketing hypes up its power, but the reality is much less dramatic. Still, the idea of getting any info at all is enough to hook desperate users. But remember, what it can't do is just as important as what it claims to do. And that's where things get complicated. Why do tools like IMEI Tracker get so much attention? Simple. Desperation. Losing a phone is agony. It's your wallet, your photo album, your world. In that moment, you're not thinking about privacy or ethics. You just want your phone back. Tools like IMEI Tracker tap into that feeling of powerlessness, offering a sense of control. Official channels, carriers, police, feel slow and bureaucratic. A tool you can run yourself feels proactive, like you're taking charge. Beyond personal loss, these tools appeal to a desire for justice, helping law enforcement or carriers identify stolen devices. The legitimate need to verify a device's status makes these tools seem necessary. But that powerful allure is what makes them risky. They're marketed to our fear of loss and desire for control. The promise is so compelling, we rarely stop to ask, where's this data from? Is it legal? Could it be misused? When we're desperate, we don't always think about the consequences. Where does IMEI Tracker get its info? That's the million dollar question and a huge red flag. The tool is open source, but the code just shows it's connecting to various websites and APIs. Who owns those databases? How accurate is the info? No one really knows. Most tools scrape public IMEI lookup sites, often run by third parties with data from manufacturers, carriers, leaks, or user submissions. The result? A patchwork of data with questionable origins and reliability. Some info might be accurate, some outdated, some from data breaches. You could be accessing data that was stolen or illegally obtained. So, while you're trying to find your phone, you might be using a system that profits from hacking. That's a moral and legal mess. Data protection laws like GDPR are strict. IMEI numbers linked to individuals are personal data. Are these databases compliant? Almost certainly not. The whole operation exists in a legal gray area, with anonymous creators and servers in lax jurisdictions. Ambiguity is the system's only real feature. Let's talk ethics. Did you ever consent to your phone's IMEI being stored in some random online database? Of course not and neither did anyone else. Using IMEI Tracker means accessing info likely collected without permission. That's a privacy violation, no matter your intentions. The potential for misuse is huge. Scammers, stalkers, or even just nosy people could exploit this data. The tool provides a puzzle piece that in the wrong hands is dangerous. Legally, it's a nightmare. What's fine in one country could be a crime in another. The law lags far behind the technology, leaving users exposed. We need ways to identify lost property, but the current methods are ethically and legally questionable. Technology has outpaced regulation, and now we're all just along for the ride. The dilemma, do nothing, or risk violating privacy. Who uses IMEI Tracker? It's a spectrum. The good, cybersecurity students and ethical hackers using it to learn and improve security. They might find flaws and make the digital world safer. The bad, criminals, scammers, and stalkers using it as a weapon. They exploit the tool for theft, harassment, or fraud. The curious, regular people desperate to recover a lost phone or just curious if the tool works. They're the most vulnerable, 
often unaware of the risks or legal gray areas. The line between curiosity and complicity is thin. The tool itself is neutral. It's just code. But its context is not. It exists in a world where data is a commodity and privacy is an afterthought. Understanding who uses these tools is the first step to a real conversation about access and responsibility. Education is critical. Most users don't realize the risks. The accidental tourists in cybersecurity are the ones most likely to get burned. The tool's neutrality doesn't protect you from the consequences. Knowing the risks is the first step to using technology responsibly. So, when should anyone be allowed to query an IMEI database? The answer? Only through official channels. Law enforcement, with a warrant, should have access for investigations. Carriers need it to block stolen phones and fight theft. Organizations like the GSMA already maintain global blacklists for carriers, not the public. Should there be a public portal? Maybe, but only with strict safeguards, like verifying you're the owner. Self-service, but with high walls. The key is balancing information access with privacy. Tools like I'm Eye Tracker offer the illusion of power, but no safeguards. A better system would be transparent, legal, and built on consent. Sensitive data should never be a free-for-all. Focusing on IMEI Tracker alone misses the bigger issue. It's just one of thousands of data scraping and OSINT tools out there. We live in an age where information leaks everywhere, and tools spring up to collect it. Hacking tools are now available to anyone, not just experts. This democratization has upsides, empowering security researchers and activists, but it also lowers the bar for malicious activity. The same tool can be used for good or harm. The real problem is our leaky data infrastructure and careless data practices. We need to ask, why is so much data public? Why are companies so careless? Blaming one tool is easy. Fixing the system is the real challenge. Our collective responsibility is to create a safer, more private digital world. So what's the takeaway? IMEI Tracker isn't really a tracker, it's an info gatherer. It promises a simple fix for lost phones, but its methods are murky and results unreliable. It scrapes data from questionable sources, often without consent. There are legitimate uses for IMEI queries, but public tools like this are an ethical minefield. Using them means participating in a system that undermines privacy. The bigger issue is the ecosystem of open source intelligence tools and leaky data. The responsible path use official tools, report your loss, and respect privacy. Avoid shadowy shortcuts. Your digital privacy is worth more than a phone. The real problem isn't the tool, but the chaotic, leaky world it feeds on. In the end, our need for control in a digital world must be balanced with respect for privacy and consent.